Don't do that. <coughs> it's better to obey God than it is man any day. Don't bow to pressure, bow to the Lord. God's will will be done. It's cool to know that he, he states in here, you know, those guys did exactly what you willed for them to do. And it caused your son Jesus to die and be our Savior. You had the plan all along. Nothing surprised you, Lord. He's got the plan for each one of us and every one of us in this room. Nothing's going to take him by surprise. Nothing. With or without you, he's going to have his will done. So the problem lies with each one of us. Are we going to be in God's will to carry out what he's called us to do? Number four, God has a perfect plan. Verse 28. It says, They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. These guys carried everything out. They thought it was their plan and purpose, but God was behind it all. And there are so many of us right now enveloped with, with Israel and all the things going on in this earth and how ridiculous some of Obama's decisions are and Russia and everybody all over the world. Is, we're just getting entangled in it. You can't turn the news on without hearing it. It will take us over if we let it. Be about the Father's business. Will I pray and bless Israel any way I can, but you know what? I'm not going to get entangled in it. I want to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ like Peter and John just did and cause 5,000 in this city to come to the faith. That will do more good. Because you know what? Obama ain't getting taken out of office until he's done. And there ain't nothing you can do about it but pray for him to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's all you can do for him. Revelation 12, 10 and 11. I was thinking when they did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. I thought of Revelation 12. Do you have that up there, Patrick? No? Oh, buddy, I don't know where Revelation oh, There it is. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their life so much as to shrink from death. This is Peter and John. Even though they could have died, they spread the gospel, the blood of Jesus Christ, all over that place. They never feared. And that's where you and I have to get with this gospel, this message of Jesus Christ. It's by the blood of the Lamb first, and then our testimony. Every one of us have a testimony, every one, of what God has done for you and through you. And you need to share it. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Never, never put it under a basket and hide it. And then Romans 13, 1. We've read this so many times in uh, Bible study. It's pathetic. Some love it and some hate it. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. All authority is God established. And Pilate was God established. And he was put in the place to give Jesus an unfair trial and put him to death. It was planned. It was going to happen. And if it hadn't been Pilate, it would have been somebody else. There's a plan and purpose. There's a plan and purpose in your life, and we all know it's not to harm us but to prosper us, to give us hope, and to give us a future. 
God has the plan for you. And what's cool about it, we're walking around with Keith and Trina and Andrew. <coughs> you know what? When we get to heaven, we got a rock with a new name on it, baby. New name. I don't even know what my name is in heaven, but it's going to be cool to get there and find out. This life as we know it is going to pass away. And we need to share the gospel of Jesus Christ no matter what. We're in a place where all our governmental and world things are going that we may not know our faith in Jesus Christ as we know it right now because things might get between a rock and a hard place for it. So we need to get serious. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm telling you, get serious. God has a perfect plan, and we need to pray for God's will to be done. Jesus will not return until God's will is done. Until every voice, every heart and mind and ear has heard about Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior that needs to hear. And then he's coming back for you and me, a spotless bride. God wants everyone to hear the gospel. And he's hearts that no one would perish. <coughs> when we're in God's will, things happen. The ground shakes. Did you notice these guys have two meetings and nothing happens? And they, they get together and pray one time in the name of Jesus and it shook the place up? It's the power of Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit power that shakes things up. And you ought to be shaking things up if you're not. You're filled. You have the power within you to shake things up. The ground shakes. The Holy Spirit is present. Souls come to the faith. 3,000 at a time. The crippled walk, the blind see, the resurrection happens. Miraculous signs appear. Holy Spirit power. When you're in God's will, things happen. The word comes out of us boldly. There's no fear in the perfect love of God. No fear. Love casts, perfect love casts out fear. No matter what happens, we win. We're winners. We're overcomers. And it's because of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And Jesus loved us enough to die for us. And he asked us, to commune together until he returns. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to have communion. And for those of you that are visiting this morning, uh, we'll all take communion together. We serve an open <coughs> communion here. And that means that if you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we want you to take communion with us. And the guys and gals will hand it out and hold it and we'll all partake together. I was thinking about it this morning as, as I was uh, thinking about communion and, and how all of us were powerless after the fall. Adam and Eve did one of the most unforgivable things that they could do, and it was to disobey God. Powerless, and we needed reconnected to the source. I don't know about any of you, but I felt powerless several times in my life. And to lose hope and to feel powerless is almost devastating. Disconnected from the source of life. They were kicked, they were booted out of the Garden of Eden. And they had angels there with swords protecting that opening so that they could never enter that garden again. But God had the perfect plan in, in place, and I'm so thankful. It says in the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. The Word was with God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. This body and blood that they're passing out is Jesus' body and blood. 
And we were powerless until Jesus came for you and me. And thank God he had the perfect plan. He became flesh and dwelt among us. And I thought, how cool is that? That God would step out of eternity and come to this earth to be like us so we, in turn, could be like him. Flesh, this body, the flesh of Jesus. It's the flesh that causes us trouble. I don't know about you, but my flesh gets me in all kinds of trouble. I was supposed to surrender it to Jesus, and all the old things pass away, and all things become back brand new. But I'm here to tell you there are days that my flesh overtakes me. This flesh gets us in trouble. Before we take communion, I want us to reflect on our past week. What we've done, what we didn't do that we should have done. How we might have hurt somebody. How we might have not done what God Almighty wanted us to do. How maybe we just marched out of His will. I want you to reflect on that. Just say, Father, I sinned against him. Please forgive me. He'll do it. He didn't send his son so things would be in, in vain. Tell him. Tell him how much you love him right now. It says they all raised their voices and prayed. How powerful it was. To be able to repent and ask for forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior has to be the greatest thing that's ever been able to happen to you and me. We had no connection. We were separated for life. Ask God the Father to help you forgive others as he forgives us. Jesus had the flesh. He knows your pain. He knows everything you're going through. He knows your victory. He knows the persecution that you're going through. He knows. He knows when you're locked up. He knows when you're free. He knows when you cry out. And he knows when you're alone. He knows. Jesus. The beaten flesh, the stripes that was sacrificed for you and me. The guy said they stood against the anointed one. But God had the perfect sacrificial lamb, and it was Jesus. Let's take me to the body of Christ. This blood we hold in our hand, blood of Jesus. It was shed for you and me. And I love the song, What Can Take Away My Sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Pat, you have Exodus 12 up there. He says, tell the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and the tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lamb. 
that same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in water, but roast it over the fire head, legs, or head, legs, and inner parts. Do not think about that. Let that soak in a little bit. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you're to eat it. With your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. Now I did all of that to let you know that Jesus Christ paid the price once and for all. We don't have to go through that ritual all the time. Can you imagine what it would be like to have to go through that every time you needed to have the death angel pass over? Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, sacrificed his body and blood and did it all for you and me once and for all. That's powerful. What can take away my sin? Nothing. Father, we thank you so much for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Lord, there's only one Jesus, there's only one Savior, there's only one way. And Jesus said, you know the way. You know the way to the place I'm going. And if I go, I will come back and get you and take you to be with me. And the question was asked, Lord, how do we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Lord, it was Jesus' body and blood that connected us to you. We now have a way to you, God, Father Almighty. And we're thankful that you had the plan in the beginning and you have not let one of us suffer because we're without a Savior. Lord, help us to always be bold, be a witness for you, and help us to not get prideful, but to give you the glory and the honor and the praise for all of it. And dear Jesus, we will remember you till you come. We'll remember you forever and ever and ever. However long that is, I can't even comprehend. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We give you the blessings that you and you alone deserve. And we do it in Jesus' name. Hey guys, we're going to do a song for communion, and uh, if I can do this, um, um, we had a friend of ours at work that got killed Friday on baseline on a motorcycle accident, but um, I worked as an aunt, I've known her since 94 for years, and she's always been a Christian woman, and uh, I wanted to share what she put on Facebook. I just thought it was cool how that even in a moment like that, that um, when things are at 
such high despair and so tragic that she was willing to praise to praise yeah. God.
week, try to think uh, about things when they're going wrong for you. And praise, praise God. There are always, always so many good things that we praise God for. And if you can't find something in your heart to praise God for yourself, think about somebody that's close to you and give thanks for them. Praise, praise is very much needed. We have a jealous God, and He wants us to praise Him and love Him. Yes, ma'am. So much that you brought us to destiny. Thank you so much for creating destiny. And finally, thank you that we have Pastor and Karen full time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is a real big deal. And it's a real big deal because in order for us to go out each and every day and be the Christians we need to be, we need a lot of help. All of us. Oh, I hate this thing. I have to but anyway, we need a full-time pastor and we need Karen. Because we have a big job, like Pastor said today, we have a big job out there to love the people the way we're supposed to love them. Help us to love the people in our lives the way we're supposed to love them, Father. And thank you for giving us such a wonderful church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Go with God. He loves you. Okay. I tried to get it up there. I can't see you over a big thing. That's what I meant. Whatever it's in, I can't over it. Can you see it or whatever?